This is uh, the one-to-one -one show from Digital Music Trends, episode two, recorded on the 28th of February, 2013. So hello everyone and welcome to the one-to-one -one show, DMT's channel for in-depth one-to-one interviews, uh, of course, covering the digital music industry as always. So this week uh, on one-to-one, -one, we have uh, Phil Cortaro, uh, currently director at Digital Music Service Guevara, but with a remarkable career in the record business, working as president of Virgin Records, president of Warner Brothers, and vice president at EMI Music. So Phil, uh, thanks for joining us on the show. How's it going? Today. Very nice to be here. Very fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, you know, uh, I imagine uh, quite a few of DMT's listeners uh, will have heard about Guevara in the past uh, few years, but would you care to briefly outline what the company does and, and, you know, the core of the business model, really? The core of the business model is to bring music to brand consumers, to bring, uh, for brands to use music as currency as either a reward behavior, a, a behavior reward feature, yeah. or to be uh, brand-sponsored downloads and, and streaming consumption. Of course. Uh, so, you know, uh, talking about how you got involved with the company, you know, what was the, the thing that really drew you to, 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 join, uh, to do join this venture? Well, the truth is that um, I ran record companies most of my life, as you know, and uh, it got to a place a few years ago where the record company's model and what I wanted to do were going in two different directions. So yeah. um, I opted out of the of continuing in that model, even though I'd been there for 30 years. But because I thought that even though the record companies were struggling, the music companies really have never had more opportunity. Music's never been bigger, of course. even though the record industry is in full cardiac arrest. <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is that um, I, I started to look and I was approached by several um, online businesses who wanted to use music in yeah. their model. But they didn't want to pay for it. And I've spent my whole life protecting artists, exploiting artists, developing artists, signing artists. So I was not now going to disrespect artists. And I, I can't be in that, I can't be in that um, in that model. So when Guevara came along, the thing that was different about Guevara is that they wanted to use music and um, but they, they provided a model where the artist did get paid. It was free to the consumer, but it was a full rate to the artist and to the publisher. Yeah. And that's what attracted me to Guevara. Yeah, sure, of course. And uh, taking a step back and talking about brands and artists, of course, uh, you know, majors missed a few tricks back in the day. Uh, and of course, now they're catching up and they all have, you know, their own brand, uh, brand relationship departments. Uh, but, but back in the day, you know, um, there wasn't as much focus in bringing uh, brands into the into the frame. And uh, in, in that optic, also a lot of artists decided to go for uh, direct deals with brands, of course, going through management and avoiding actually using the music, uh, which is, uh, of course, you know, it's crazy because we know that music is uh, such a key component to drawing uh, people in when it, when it comes to, to advertising. Um, so how, how do you feel uh, brands can bring music uh, back into the fold to really help consumers uh, get drawn into the brand? Well, there were two big variables there. First of all, for years, we tried to bring the brand into the business. And um, you know, there were several obstacles. The first obstacle was the, the artists largely didn't think the brands were cool and didn't want to align themselves. The brands thought uh, dealing with the artists was too difficult. Yeah. So so both sides had um, come to the conclusion that it just wasn't worth it. And um, But the fact is that as the record companies lost the resources to exploit artists the way they had been accustomed to them, and, and, and the artists realized that the alternatives at the labels were not once what they once were. Then it became more and more clear that the labels needed help exploiting artists. And the brands, thankfully, at the same time, recognized that their, that their users were the same as the artist's fans. They had the same demographics, psychographics, behavior, needs, requirements. And uh, they realized by aligning artists with their brands, they could get a much bigger engagement, a longer and better engagement uh, than if they didn't use the artists. So the uh, consequent result was that uh, that marriage came exactly at the right time, either out of consequence, but more likely out of need, that when the artists could no longer get the required support from the record companies, the, the, the brands saw an opportunity to come in, align themselves with artists, 
the artists, of course, at that point were a lot were a lot more um, receptive. Yeah, probably out of need. And uh, at the end of the day, we have a better relationship than we've ever had before. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and and um, you know, uh, Guevara, of course, uh, has had a, a pretty good uh, four or five months. Uh, you know, you launched in the U.S. in October, and uh, you've had. Uh, uh, you know your mobile, uh, you know launch party. I think uh, just uh, uh, this week, I think, and you right. also, right. Um, you know, you reached uh, half a million uh, members on February thirteenth. Uh, there was a, there was a release on, on your website. So you know things are, are really starting to come together. Uh, and the service launched in the U.S. Uh, back in October twenty twelve. So uh, of course the the states are hard not to cra not to crack, especially when it comes to uh, consumer acquisition. Uh, so do, do you think that's going to be something that can be helped or, or driven also by the brands themselves uh, to help you get there? Well, obviously, it's, I think it's a matter of critical mass. Yeah. As more as if we can, if we can put one success story up, then we'll attract the second. If we can put two, we'll get four. If we get four, we get eight. You know the story. Success yeah. is exponential. Um, if you fail at something, nobody wants to know you. If, if you succeed at something, everybody turns into a sheep. Yeah. So um, we all know that story. At the end of the day, we want to deliver very good results, one brand at a time, yeah. and prove that the model works and prove that the foundation is legitimate yeah. and, can, and can bring a result. And if we can prove that over time, I believe what we'll have is a, a legitimate B2B white paper uh, brand enhancement engagement enhancement vehicle. Yeah, and people will see the value in that. That's my that's my hope, and that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, of course, you know, um, uh, consumers can can have uh, basically rewards uh, by interacting with brands on the site. So, for example, if you run out of uh, credits, I guess to listen to to free music, if you interact with uh, uh, one or two pieces of uh, pieces of advertising or interactive advertising from a brand, then right. uh, you get rewarded with with uh, more free streams. Uh, so, how how are users responding to that to that model? Which, of course, is uh, is interesting because it's more, um, I guess, uh, you know, interactive and, and, and open-ended than, uh, for example, a Spotify's free model where they just impose uh, specific adverts on you at uh, any time. I think the, um, the response has been very good. Let's start there, okay? Yeah. They, they like the model. The response has been good. But at the end of the day, what we want to be able to do is allow the consumer to consume music where, when, and how they want to. Yeah. So yes, they can do exactly what you just said. They can, they can, as a result of the brand relationship, receive music free to them, paid for by the brand. Yep. But they also, if they choose to, they can also buy music. They can download music. They can stream music for a price. There's, there's all, what we want to do is present the full menu of music consumption, but use the brand as the lead. Because at the end of the day, that will give people the most music at the least price. Of course, of course. And they're talking about mobile. Uh, you know, uh, so many uh, huge corporations and, and, and internet companies are struggling on how to display advertising on, on mobile devices. Of course, uh, with Guevara's uh, play being uh, very much focused on brands, uh, how did you, um, you know, how did the company manage to integrate uh, the branding aspects w within the mobile um, experience? Well, we're still doing that now. To, yeah. to be uh, to be fair, what we're trying, you know, obviously the value to the brand is that you're able to tell their story to the consumer. Yeah. The value to the consumer is that you want it to be as least disruptive as possible. So, you, you, you know, we're walking a fine line there. And the line that we're walking is that we try, excuse me, or we try and, we try and weave the uh, brand message in the, into the programming to, in a manner that it is not disruptive. Yeah. That it is not intrusive. And, um, and you know, we try different methods on that all the time. But at the end of the day, it's about being in front and back of the message. It, yeah. may just be a, it may just be a one or two second vignette that leads into a song. or Because don't forget, if a brand buys a block of music to deliver to consumers, if Pepsi or Budweiser or whatever, or a consumer brand owns that block, they can be the architect of how they deliver that block. Sure. It may be a short message up front or in the back or on a per song basis. It might just be one second logo. But at the end of the day, our goal and their goal has been to be as least intrusive yeah. as possible for the music consumer and for the brand client.
Yeah, but that's quite exciting because it means that it allows everybody to really experiment and do a lot of A-B testing and, and, and check what's really working on the platform, yeah. right? It, 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 it's very exciting and we're excited most of all. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, uh, just talking about, you know, uh, brands and, and the specific artists, like the, have you guys thought about uh, at all working, like uh, have you had any opportunities to or, or, or proposals to work uh, with uh, one specific brand that wants to deal with one specific artist in terms of a, a prominent, uh, you know, uh, exposure on the platform, or is it more like a blocks of music where you, you know, you the consumer can choose what what they want to play? Right, right. At this minute, it's been blocks of music, but I can tell you that we've had several approaches from both sides, yeah, from the artist community and from the brand community. And what we want to do is, you know, it's um, you don't want to put your family in the car until you test drive the car and make sure it's safe. <laughs> So we're, 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 uh, we're in the lab rat stage. We think we have a great product. It's responding very, very well. And um, at the end of the day, yes, we think there'll be a lot of those kind of relationships, but we've not put one up yet because uh, when we do put one up, we want to hit it out of the park. Yeah. And if we do hit it out of the park, we know what the result will be. So we don't want to leave any room for error. We want to get it right. And uh, we don't want to put anybody on the line until we know everything's perfect, which of is course. what we're we're just about there now. Yeah, of course. And, and the final question, just talking about you know how brands and consumers can interact. Another component that is is quite important, especially in the states, is the relationship with the carriers. If you if you're looking at at the mobile space, uh, do you think you know there, there's a play uh, whereby you know mobile carriers could come in? as a third party that that uh, helps uh, on the one side uh, fund fund the music streaming and on the other side you know provide the infrastructure to to actually run uh, the service from uh yes and yes yeah because uh, obviously they obviously they're the um the carrier so it it can't go down without them yeah. so so if we if we have to choose between having them as a passenger or having them as a participant the vote will be to have them as a participant because a they can bring more value and b they can get more value. Yeah. And if we can succeed at that, that's a big win for everybody at the table, which would be our goal. That's great. Well, thanks so much for talking to me, and uh, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what's going to happen with Govera this year, especially in the states. Thanks, Andrea. We look forward to it. Also, we look forward to sharing that with you as we go. And uh, for all U.S. listeners, it's uh, Govera and Australian listeners, of course. It's uh, govera.com. Uh, check it out. Mm -hmm.